asked me to read one of these in the Anglo-Saxon mm -hmm. and then the English. Um, the Anglo-Saxon is a Germanic language. It's also known as Old English. And I'll just give you a little history. Uh, I translated Beowulf and it was published in 2000. And um, I love the Anglo-Saxon and I was missing it very much, which is why I took on the project of doing the riddle poems. Um, and I've spent 10 or 12 years, a long time on that. Um, so here's one for you in the original Anglo-Saxon first. Met on thissum dahum, deod on yefan, fede on moder, ne was me fear the gen, calder in ninen, tha mek on anan, wellman men a wedo fecon, heldo on fredo, hevo to wa, swa arlik swa, a hir a na bear, tha ik on seta, swa men ye sapu, wherein ungeva, weird anta jesta, meo se frey, Meg feta sifan, ata un weto, winter mera, sifas a certain, heid hefa, swearsa by lesa, suna o dotra, thai he swadaya. And the translation, my translation is this. In the days before I was given life, I was abandoned. Father and mother I was without, though meeting both in the breaking world. There I found a friendly kinship with a new protector. She held me, kept me covered. Weak I was and warmed me like her own bosom babe. I, stranger guest, was loved in a world of strange siblings. This close keeping fed my soul, my need to increase, filled by mother love. Then I, no longer daughter, severed my kinship and raised up my wings to the wide wind road. Thank you. So okay. it's a <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you it's a cuckoo. Mm -hmm. And you know the, the parents often the they, the eggs they leave in a stranger's nest and the cuckoo's larger and takes over the nest and often pushes the other chicks out. <laughs> Nature, red and tooth and fuck. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, this other book uh, was just published this spring and it's called Wild Again and that is a, that is a fisher there. Um, Roger spoke up and it was a fisher that my dogs treed. I have two big dogs. And they treed it, and it stayed in a, it was in April, so the tree didn't have any leaves. It stayed in the tree all day long um, and gave me lots to think of. And um, before I go a little further, I have to tell you that I just, I just recently, last Saturday night on the full moon, my dogs were barking like crazy, and I looked out, and it looked like daylight. And there was the biggest black bear I'd ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Hunting around, <laughs> looking around, knocking things over. And uh, the dogs didn't bother him a bit. Um, he eventually left after I banged on the window. But it's one of the things that I love so much about living up here. Uh, this afternoon I looked out the window and there were several flocks of wild turkeys. Uh, with the parents and the little ones following behind, eating the fallen apples. So it's one of the it's one of the reasons that I came here and have stayed here all these years. So, um, and I'm going to start uh, this section with a poem about what what I did when I came up here. When I came up here, I decided that I would plant trees, and um, I have ten acres. And the DEC person came out and gave me some advice, and I planted a thousand spruces. Oh, thanks to my children and some friends who said, don't ever ask them again. <laughs> um, but we planted those little trees that are now about 80 feet tall. Uh, it's a wonderful, and that's where the bear is living, and that's where the fisher was living. 
and there are lots of deer up there. So um, the first poem I'm going to in this little sequence is called Closing, and it's about the day uh, of signing the papers for the place. Today I said yes to the land. In the presence of witnesses, I took up my pen and pressed its fine point to documents. Today I married earth, wood, and stone. The surveyor's circles marked my land's extremities on a sky as clear as June's. The gardens cleanly white. The lilac patterns her shape on the snow. All those fingers scratching through winter. Down the road, starlings dance on the backs of sheep. Wild turkeys whirl out of the forest. The mountains rearing up burn blue. Earth's ancestors open her door to me. The well shudders and coughs up the same sweet water I remember from another flatter life. This is that life, elevated to clouds. This is the land in the sky I miraged out of black canyons. And then a couple of poems about the planting. Planting wildness. The stooped and swaying labor that planted a thousand seedling spruces is not wasted. Immediately, they take to the mountain. In seven days, and as if they were native to this thin earth, they display bright, wild needles from the tips of their fingers. While you wane, the trees increase, their bodies adding arms, adding digits. In 10 years, they attain a giant height. 15 years, and there is no trace of the meadow that tried to choke their roots. The sun's light cannot penetrate their density. Birds nest, bears test their circumference. You, remembering the old tame slope, avert your eyes as you enter. Walk cautiously among spiraling branches. This is the reason you lift your head off the pillow each morning. You go willing to sleep every night even when the bleakness is hard upon you. And um, there are lots of uh, wild animals, lots of red hawks, and now the eagles too, of course. They're everywhere, which is a wonders, wonderful thing. I'm sure you've all seen them driving along. It's, it's like a miracle every time. Uh, so this one is called Hawk's Reason. When the hawk leaves his tree for movement among the green, when he aims earthward, the air opens for him as if sliced by a deft knife, space disappearing into time's aperture. The nosing gray vole, knowing she will cease, sharply screams, screams twice. The hawk flexes lightning bright talons, his wings broadcast intent, close and break like thunder, dimming June's new blades. When the hawk's blazing claws read the vole's rolling body, his gleaming beak arcs toward the fleet heart, and blood's first, deepest drop drops through blue. The whole sky opens, blameless and distinct. One more in this part. This is called Wild Again, the title of the book. When the forest was field after orchard after field after forest, when these spruces had not been thought by grasses, encumbered only by wild red strawberries, the dogs ran in there every day. They corralled and cowed speckled airshers, hooped and barked for their farmer lords. They herded those cows to stalls until the milk was gone, the barns fell down. Then there was a rainy planting, fingerlings slippered into bladed soil, rocked clayed soil, followed by slow growth, passage to sky's eye, patient, steady renovation from green staves, red fruit, earth's increase to stippled, needled, knotty ground. And at last, 
only this slant-lit site where primal dog paws pound russet spurs shed by leaning lithe underboughs. Ah, wind suing, susurrating. And just there, the doe's immigrant eyes home again in her found wild. <laughs>